Uh, when should I not listen to my mashpia? What a question. When should I not listen to my mashpia? Let me, let me give you the two sides of a mashpia's role. One side of mashpia's role is a mashpia is supposed to be a friend. A mashpia is not a rebbe. A mashpia doesn't dictate the word of God and speak to you from the top down, like from heaven to earth. A mashpia must supposed to be your friends. And they speak to you where you are. And hopefully tell you what you need. And as far as that's concerned, you know, in the Sikh of Shaiftim, the Nav, the Rebbe called them a Yoyitz. A Yoyitz, something you can talk things over with. So, as a rule, whatever the Mashpia tells you, you could question. You want to understand. On the other hand, the role of Mashpia is to keep you focused on the will of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. In other words, you need a Mashpia because we're all very biased when it comes to ourselves. We love ourselves very much. And oftentimes, what, we know what God wants, but we don't really want to do it, so we want to weasel out of it. The mashpia is somebody we go and consult, hoping he'll give us the answer we want, and he often doesn't. If we have a mashpia who tells us what we want to hear, we need a new mashpia. Mashpia is supposed to focus us. They're supposed to be our conscience. They're supposed to be our voice of reason when we get too emotional, when we get too nervous, when we get too down. The mashpia is supposed to help center us. So the mashpia does two things, fundamentally. He speaks to us on our level. We have a right, an obligation to question and we want to understand what the mashpia is saying. A mashpia is not a rebbe. A mashpia is not a rov. A mashpia is a good friend. But on the other hand, his role is to tell you what Hashem wants. Now there are many instances where what Hashem wants is subjective. Chas v'shalom, Torah doesn't change. But the application of Torah, especially the application of Hasidus, and Lefni Mishur Sadin and Hidur Mitzvah are things, you know, there's an old expression, sometimes the biggest kula is a chumra, and the biggest chumra is a kula, even Rabbanim understand that. And that's the role of the mashpia. So when you ask me, when should I not listen to my mashpia? If your question is, when is it time for me to get a new mashpia? The answer to that question is, if A, the mashpia doesn't talk things over with me, I can't you know, I can't get him to explain to me what he's saying that I should understand it and I should be comfortable with it. Or B, I find that Mashpi is compromising Torah. He's telling me what I want to hear, which is not consistent with Torah. But if the Mashpi meets both of those criteria, A, whatever he tells me we're able to discuss, and he's able to explain it to me and I should be able to understand it. And B, he's providing me with clarity by the will of a Kaddish Baruch Hu, I guess the answer to that question is when is when should I listen to Mashpia is when my Mashpia tells me that I shouldn't listen to him. Now uh, Mashpiam don't grow on trees, you know. I mean everybody I know will always tell me I'm having a very hard time finding a Mashpia. Or to say it in other words, there's plenty of people who who act as Mashpiam, but there are very few people who are really qualified. If you're fortunate enough to have a real Mashpia that's truly qualified, before you dispose of him, make sure you have another. And uh, be careful not to let your ego or your Yetzirah steer you. It's very important to understand that being a Yid, being a Chassid, and following the Torah, and following the spirit of Torah as it's inspired by Hasidus, is good for us. It's not a prison. It's not holding us back. It's not punishing us. It's not restricting us. It's focusing us, which makes us bigger and better people, or better and bigger people. Or in the Lashon HaChasidus, ultimately that's where freedom is. Freedom is in the ability to grow and to expand myself. And a, a, a Rebbe, a Rav, a Rov, a Rosh Hashiva and a Mashpia all contribute to this, not by being nice to us, but by pushing us in a certain direction. So I would say that realistically, if you have issue of Mashpia, the place to start is talking over with him. And if that doesn't work, Realistically, you have to have chua beroiv You have to get two more voices. And you can tell your mashpia that certain questions, the Rebbe said, you know, that you have a question, you go to Asei Lecha Rav. And if the question is too complex, he takes two more people and he gets a majority. So I suppose you could do the same thing. But I, I would strongly advise against you doing it in quotations behind the mashpia's back. Because, again, if your mashpia is no good, he's no good. But if he's a real mashpia and you don't like what he's saying to you, be careful, be careful, because you can end up cutting off your nose to spite your face.